اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم We studied these questions last time. Can you take an oath or swear by anyone's name? Uh, can uh, according to hadith uh, 2679 Sahih Bukhari no we cannot we can only swear by Allah what if a lawyer wins the court case by about the thing which are not rightful to his client by giving the lawyer people... the lawyer is actually winning a piece of fire for himself and his client Okay. Today we will study from the book Sahih Al Muslim, Hadith number nine eight four. Read it. Uh, it was narrated from Abu Huraira that the that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "If you knew, or if they knew what there is of reward in the front draw, there would be drying." Drawing, drawing of lots. Ibn, Ibn Harb said in the first row uh, there would be drawing of lots. So this, this is for men. It tells us the importance of how great reward is in the first row. So the men should try their best to catch the salah in the first row. Next student, Khatija Muslim. Do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, read this one. It was narrated by Abu Huraira said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best row for men are at the front and the worst are at the back. And the best row for women are at the back and the worst are at the front. So whenever um, any man prays congregational salah in the mosque, the best row for him is the first row. And when any woman prays in the mosque, the best row is the back row for the woman. I don't need to write any question for this. <clears throat> Next student are Miss Hood. It was narrated that Sohail bin Saad said, I saw men with the ends of their is are. Is, is Waist vapor tied around their necks like children because there was not enough fabric in their Izar. 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 Praying, praying behind the Prophet. Someone said, Oh, women, do, do not raise your heads. Until the men have raised the hair. <clears throat> so women also used to pray behind Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So at that time, most of the people were poor. The men did not have enough clothes. So this command was given to the women that they should not raise their head from sajda until the men have raised their head. No need to write any question. Ija. Izar ka matlab hota hai teh band. Jani chhe hum pente. Atija read this. It was narrated from Azur that he had Salim narrated from his father that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if the wife of one of you asks for permission to go to the masjid, let him not prevent her from doing so. 
So here we will write the question. <clears throat> Can the husband stop his wife from going to the mosque? Can the husband stop his wife from going to the mosque? According to Hadith 988 of Sahih al Muslim, no. He cannot stop her. I will repeat. <clears throat> According to Hadith 988 of Sahih al -Bitrim. No, he cannot stop her. Ms. Hood, repeat the question and answer. Uh, can the husband stop his wife from going to the mosque? Hadith uh, 988 of Sahih al-Muslim. No, he cannot stop her. Read the next one. Uh, Abdullah bin Umar said, I heard the messenger of Allah sallam, say, do not prevent your woman from going to the mosque if they ask you for permission Bilal bin Abdullah said uh, by, by Allah we will certainly prevent them Abdullah turned to him and uh, rebuked him harshly in a manner that I had never heard and said, I narrate to you from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu and you say by Allah So the same question is repeated in this one that can the husband stop his wife from going to the mosque? No, he cannot stop his wife from going to the mosque. And also, whenever we read any command of Prophet ﷺ, we have no other choice just to obey him. Whether we understand it or whether we don't understand it, we need to obey it completely. Next student, okay, Miss Ho, read this one. It was narrated from Ibn Umar that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, "Do not prevent the female slaves of Allah from attending the Masjid of." Hmm. So, female slave basically means woman. Everyone is a slave of Allah Almighty, so no husband cannot stop his wife from going to mosque. Same or this is repeated. Next student, Amira Johnson. Atija Muslim. It was narrated that Umar said, I had the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa say, if your woman flock asks you for permission to go to the masjid, then give them permission. So the same question is repeated in this hadith as well. Next student, Naidira. It was narrated from Ibn Umar that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do not present the women, do not prevent the women from going out to the masjid at night. 
a son of Abdullah bin Umar said, we will not let them go out least they lead to mischief and suspicion. Ibn Umar rebuked him and said, I said, I say, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and you say, we will not let them go. We will not let them. Same question is repeated in this hadith as well. And whenever we receive any command from Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we must accept it. Next student, uh, hold. It was narrated from Basar bin Said that Zainab Atakafia used to narrate, narrate that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, If one of you wants uh, to attend Isha prayer, uh, let her not. Put on perfume that right. Mm, so basically, Tonight. when any woman wants to go to the mosque, she should not use any perfume. So here we will write this question. And a uh, woman use perfume before going to the mosque. Question here that you all need to write is can a woman use perfume before going to the mosque? In the answer you will write According to the Hadith 996 of Sahih al-Muslim, no, she cannot. According to the Hadith 996, no, she cannot. Next student, Amira Johnson. Atija Muslim. Repeat. It was not Repeat the it question was not and the answer. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Repeat the question and the answer. Can a human use perfume before going to the masjid? Mm. No. Reference, it is not allowed. Reference for your answer. Yeah, um, according to the hadith 996 of sorry, Muslim. Correct. What is this one? It was narrated as Zainab, the wife of Abdullah, said, The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said to us, If one of you attends the masjid, let her not touch perfume. So the same question is repeated in this hadith. Can a woman use perfume before going to the mosque? And the answer is, no, she cannot. Naidira Hadith Nana 8 It narrated that Abu Hurairah who and who said any woman who has applied incense, let her not attend in Shah prayer with us. Mm -hmm. So basically, if a name of your colleague is using perfume, you can even stop her from going to the mosque with you. That is what this hadith means.
Okay, next student. Hold. It was narrated from Yahya that is Ibn Said from Amra bin Abdul Rahman that she heard Aisha, the wife of the Prophet وسلم, say, if the Messenger of Allah وسلم, had seen what women have innovated, he would have forbidden them from attending the masjid as the women of the children of Israel were forbidden from attending their places of worship. I said to Amra, were the women of the children of Israel forbidden from attending their uh, places of worship? Uh, she said yes. So this hadith also shows us that even at the time of Aisha Raziyallahu some women started to uh, make negative use of this freedom. But since it, it is the command of Prophet وسلم, so we cannot stop women from going to the mosque. Especially today every woman goes out daily for education or for job. So nobody can stop women from going to the mosque. Next student, Ikra Naz. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear it you. Was it was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, concerning the saying of Allah, the Most High, and offer your salat, neither allow nor in a loud voice. This was revealed when the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was hiding in Mecca. When he led his companions in a prayer, he raised his voice when he recited Quran. But when the idolaters heard it, they revealed the Quran. They revealed, reviled the Quran. And the one who has revealed it, and the one who has brought it. So Allah said to his prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and offer your salat. Prayer, neither allow, lest the idolaters hear your recitation, nor in a low voice, lest your companions be unable to hear it. Let them hear the Quran, but do not recite it loudly, but follow a way between meaning neither too loud nor too soft. So this command was given to the Prophet Wasallam by Allah Almighty when he was in the Makkah. And Makkah was inhabited by idolaters, idol worshippers. But this command is still valid for all those Muslims who are living in non-Muslims country. For example, if a Muslim use a zan in loudspeaker, especially at Fajr Salah time, this means it will disturb the non-Muslims and they will become angry. And since they are, they have the power in their non-Islamic country, so this means they will also revile the Quran. They will revile the Prophet Muhammad They will revile the Allah Almighty. They will revile the Islam as well. Similarly, if you pray the Salah with the loud recitation in a non-Islamic country and when the non-Muslims will get disturbed by it, again, they will become angry and they will say bad things about Islam, about Allah, about Prophet Muhammad So in that case, Allah has commanded us to offer our salah neither aloud and nor too low. Just a normal voice which, uh, which the people in the same room will hear but other people who are not with us, who are outside the room, they will not hear it. So in modern world, we use loudspeakers. This happened in India quite frequently. In India, Muslims use loudspeaker for Salah, for Azan. Then extremist Hindu often attack the mosque. They often abuse Allah Almighty. There are many videos on internet about India. 
So in my opinions, Indian Muslims should not use loudspeaker for Azan and for Salah. And I am saying this because of this Quranic ayah which is mentioned in this hadith. <clears throat> So here we can write this question as well. Muslims. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me now well? Do you hear me? No. no. Muslim living in. So the question we will write here Muslims living in non. Islamic countries and they use loud speakers for Azan and for congregational congregational Allah Muslims living in non-Islamic country can they use loudspeaker for azan and for congregational salah Okay, Muslims living in non-Islamic countries, can they use loudspeaker for Azhar and for congregational salah? So in the answer you will write, according to Hadith 1001 of Sahih al-Muslim and according to the Quranic ayah, one zero or oh, sorry one one zero of Surah Al Isra. No, they should not because the non Muslims will revile, will say bad things about. Quran, Allah Almighty, and the Prophet وسلم, when they will hear it, when they will get disturbed with it. Now I will repeat the whole answer, inshallah. According to the Hadith 1001, of Sahih Al Muslim and Quranic Ayah one one zero of Surah Al Isra, they should not. No, they should not. Because when non-Muslims will get disturbed with it, they will revile, 
they will say bad things about Quran, Koma, Allah Almighty, and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can you repeat the question and the answer? Anyone? Muslims living in non-Islamic countries, can they use a loudspeaker for the then and for congressional salat? According to the hadith, it should not. Did not you write the answer? Did you write the answer? Muslims live in many countries. Can they use loudspeaker for Azan and for congregation in a solar? According to this of Sahih al Muslim, they shouldn't. They should not and according to the Quranic ayah of Surah so today I also have some internet issue we will stop here and next time inshallah we will continue if uh, any of you has any question, they can ask me now.